Talk about solidarity right there, huh? Beautiful. If people are not and not allowed to exist, the logical conclusion is to kill them. So people need to be allowed to exist. It cannot be illegal to exist as a human being. What happened? Hi everyone, I'm Victor Caramez. Uh, I'm here on my personal, uh, not related business. Um, I'm just basically here to share my story. At one point, I was homeless, so I understand the suffering, the pain of our community, and I'm here to advocate and, and support them. Um, this is a huge issue throughout Salinas, and not only in Salinas, in so many counties throughout California. And I think it, it's time to we have to see with elected officials to fix this broken system. We need to have that dialogue, this open conversation. Uh, please, this is, um, I mean, I can share my story, but it's not important, my story. But I, I totally understand because I came from that, that um, experience, I will I put it that way. Um, uh, so I, I feel, I feel deeply in my heart, you know, when you don't have shelter, when you don't have food to, to eat, um, when you don't have other resources, you know, to, to be part of this community, part of this system. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to support my community. These folks uh, behind me, as you see, they're here to basically, they're fighting for their lives. They want to be part of the community. They want to give back to the community. And maybe at one point, why not, you know, uh, find a job, have a, you know, a quality of life. And I don't know, why not? Maybe be a homeowner at one point, right? We, we all want to have this American dream, um, but if, if we don't, as a, as a community and as a government officials and everybody out there that has the power to do so, if we don't bring those services or the tools for them to continue to move on with their lives, then nothing's gonna happen. So hopefully if this helps a little bit with my message from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Wes, for, you know, for covering this and for inviting me. Um, I appreciate everyone, and let's keep on the fight, and thank you for your support. Come on, everybody, make it over to the protest. Come on, camera eight, get your ass out here. Video, what happening to human beings? For human beings. Hi, Liliana. We have a worker from Dorothy's place who helps people. She should come and help protest homelessness, too. If you're tired of seeing people out here, help them by helping them fight their rights. Come on, people, let's get together. Let's stand together and help each other. Aren't you tired of losing your property? Are you tired of being told you gotta go, but they can't tell you where to go? Now is the time for us to stand together. Come on, people, we're doing this for you. So you can have a place to be. So they don't take your property away. Let them know you are tired. Come on, people. I know you guys have somebody that you know. Or somebody, somebody. Uh, just a human being. It would be the right thing to do is to help somebody who's down on their luck. Or who has been displaced and have nowhere else to go. This is the reason we've come out here and come together to protest because the city of Salinas doesn't really want to do anything for us. They don't want to give us a safe place to be. They want to run us around from wherever we're at. They want to take our stuff with the bulldozer and, you know, everything we own to throw it away and, you know, and just. It's okay, they want to shift the blame, they do things like that, but they just don't help nobody. You know, we got sick people, old people, mentally ill people. We got all kind of people that are displaced and have nowhere to go. And they just, we just want help. I mean, you know, they got, they get all this money and, and what, there's no help. We don't get any help. You know, uh, what happens? Where's the money going? Where, where's the help? What do, where, what do we do? Where are we supposed to go? Now they want to pass laws and try and lock us up for being homeless. 
how can we go to jail because we're homeless? That doesn't make any sense. I'm not a criminal. Yeah, she says she's not a criminal. Come on, people! Are you going to just let them tell you what to do? What you can have and what you can't? Aren't you tired? You deserve more than what the city is offering. Robert. Come and stand up for yourself. Come on, man. What you are, are human beings. What are you doing, we all have a right to be where we're at. This is where the services are. What are you Come help us fight your fight. Work together and we win. Let's go to the We're tired of getting We're tired of getting on staff table. Look at legal document, medication, my mother's actor. You want to tell me you hurt? Fuck that shit. People pick it up in the truck. That my mother. She thrown in the dump. How good? How good? No other place can you throw people properly away without giving them a place to put. No, that is inhuman. And the Supreme Court they doesn't think so. Friends. But where's your mother? Can we dig her out and throw her in the dump with mine? Now. How about that? I didn't, I'm not a criminal. I didn't do this. It was illegal what happened to me. It's an elder abuse. They have no safe shelter. For elder abuse. And yes, it's a rental. I'm not, don't have dementia. You know, myself, I'm mobility impaired from polio. That means I'm stupid. I'm, they are not stupid. I'm not, I'm, but they well, have no right homeless, to take The homeless from are them. not the, the criminals. The government knew some, what, $47 billion for the homeless. They don't have nothing. There's nothing to show for. And Newsom passed a bill that you can't look for Ted Perry. They asked for Ted Perry, where did that money go? And he said, well, you know, be redundant to do that. So I'm going to pass it that we don't have to. And the reason why, because they asked, um, where the data? Where would you do well? Where did that? He had none. He had no data for all that money. But he had no money. No the city has what. money. Because they didn't get to the people, that's why. They never get to the people. Beautiful, beautiful. Please, part of God, have mercy that people be humane. Let's take a We're stand, not let's bad take a walk. Let's We're walk. not criminal. We didn't do that. There's probably no Vita do over there. I'm the good person. Let's but go for a little while. I have no legal representation. Ooh, we need, All right, yeah, come we on need down. legal representation. Forget a, a can of beans and rice or a banana. Forget, forget that. We, who cares? I don't care if I eat. We need legal representation. We have our constitutional rights, civil rights, and human rights. Can they I can't be erased there? on one case. On one case for the whole nation. How wrong is that? I mean, there's many reasons for what happened. Today, Mercy of God hi, I'm people. Sarah Louise, and today I just got done talking to the med pen management of the Moongate Apartments. I'm waiting for a call for them to come back and give me some answers. We have people that are being retaliated against in the Moongate Apartments. People are elderly, they have mental illnesses, they have a lot of different challenges, and people are just kicking them out on the streets. They're not following their lease agreement. Most of these people have lived in that Moongate Apartments for three and a half years. Some of them have paid no rent. Some of them have paid certain amounts. Some have gotten grants. And certain parts of the grant were put onto their, their um, housing. And then the rest of the grant disappeared. There's a lot of stuff that's going on here that is totally illegal. illegal. And they thinking that the people who are in these positions of being homeless, I've been homeless for three and a half years at one point in my life. My dad was vice president of Bank of America in Boston. It happens to anybody and everybody. Nobody is far from being homeless. I did turn and the problem and is, is that no one's paying attention to what's really, really, really going on. They want to keep it in Chinatown, and as long as they do, it doesn't matter if we kill each other or what. It's sick and twisted. They know what they were supposed to have a, a police station, a, a small section in the Med Pen building. They never got that. It's these little art galleries that do nothing for the 
humanity of this area. This needs to be taken care of immediately. People are being treated like rat. human garbage. The rat, and that is wait. the biggest sin of all. So we need people to come down here and help out people to make this a better place. And I just made that call to MedPen, and they're now investigating because all of a sudden, after three and a half years, they're starting to work out their lease. A lease is what you do every day. If you do not carry out your lease agreement, what you make happen and allow to happen each day of the week <laughs> is the new lease. So they've created an entire new way of, of living in these uh, situations, and they don't want to go by that. All of a sudden, now they want to act like they know what they're doing, and it's disgusting. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to be in there on the streets, and I, I don't want to be like that. I want everybody to respect everybody and give us a chance to help us out, because we're all going to end up like that if we don't help each other. And then for how long have you been living? I've been living here oh, since uh, 70. 70. And then you, you mentioned, what do you do for a living? Right now, I'm, I'm retired. And I, I, I got injured a little bit and I can't work. So um, I, I'm in a fixing company. So I can't get more or get less. It's just fixed. So I can't go up the ladder. That's kind of hard. And then in, in the area that you live, like, are you renting a room, an apartment, or what? I got lucky. I, I'm, I'm renting a room. A room? I mean, you said that sometimes you, you, you can't make it, right? Like sometimes I can't make it, and sometimes I have to sell things that are mine and pay for it. But I've managed so far to get it on time. That's the first thing I do is the rent and then the food mm -hmm. and then whatever I want to sell. And then um, do, you have, do you have friends among the homeless community? I have a few friends in the homeless community. And matter of fact, right here on the railroad tracks, I don't go there, but in the little apartment there that's right next to it, there are a few, few people there. And then they're outside, out there, on the street. And what do they tell you about what's happening to them? They're taking their things away, throw them in the garbage, and uh, they have to replace all their things again. And sometimes they take the whole car and they take it away from them, and they have nothing. It's their property, and I have my property. I think that's this Everybody deserves a place to be where they can be safe. People are signing for services and not receiving them. People are getting sheltered with no apartments or anything open. Being rude, I'm not just with the people. Taking everything they have, and now you want to put them in jail because they're homeless? That is not right. You have all these empty lots just sitting there on buildings that don't People work for them. People need an organized space, a place where they can be waiting for their services. Without losing their property, without being told to leave. Hold your horse to support the homeless. Go to city council oh, meetings. Oh. Let the city know they need to do more for
was homeless. There's so many homeless, but at least they have a trailer, but there is so okay. much need. Would you want to interview them? I mean, she might be shy, but the mom, she'll definitely tell you what they've been through. They were robbed. Uh, Wes, thank God, helped us a lot with like putting him into a hotel and okay. finding him things, but it's people like Wes that make the difference. He helped in King City last year. He's active 24-7. Yeah, I mean, appreciate all the work you're doing. Yeah, he, you call him at midnight, he'll answer. He's calling, he's helping my friend in LA that was homeless and giving her like telling her what to do because she's like at a distance. So, um, you know, the need is very great. Absolutely. So, so we found him at Walmart one time. They were selling chocolates. Oh, wow. When me and Suke. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm Austin with KION News. Oh, I'm sorry, Austin. <laughs> nice to see you. Leticia. I got so excited when I saw Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's Viviana hi. and Bruno. Bruno, nice to meet you. They have a trailer, but they've got no running water. They've got. Quieren entrevistas en español. Tú habla. Cuando llegaste aquí, dónde estabas? ¿Qué te pasó en la iglesia cuando robaron tu mochila? Because they had their backpacks stolen with all their kids' school supplies, and it was just like a mess. So, Buenas tardes. She... Mi nombre es Viviana Valladolid. Mi nombre es Kitsia. What's been your experience in terms of? dealing with homelessness and what brings you out here today? Um, ¿Cuál ha sido tu experiencia siendo este, pues, indigente aquí en Salinas y qué es lo que te trajo aquí a Salinas eh, hoy en este día? Um, ok, hoy estoy aquí apoyando a las personas que, que están con mayor sin hogar. Um, hoy están muy sentimental. Que no están siendo apoyadas. Que... Es que siendo muy sentimental, perdón que no nos aceptan en cualquier lugar, que no podemos estar en cualquier lugar, que no hay un espacio para, para nosotros, que cualquier persona piensa que somos personas criminales, drogadictos, o personas malas, la cual no es así, la cual es mi situación o la situación de muchos que estamos en calle es porque no tenemos lugar. Mis hijos están conmigo en calle por eso, no es porque sea una mala persona. He luchado mucho, me ha tocado vender chocolates, me ha tocado dormir afuera de la Walmart, me ha tocado dormir afuera de las iglesias. Uh, me han robado todas mis cosas. Uh, sí me han tratado como una persona eh, mala, la cual no ha sido así. Yo a mis hijos son unos niños excelentes. Ellos estudian niños con reconocimiento, honores. Uh, y pues yo estoy aquí para apoyar a las personas como yo que estamos sin hogar, no porque no luchemos, no porque no queramos, sino porque Así ha sido la situación de muchas personas como yo, que no tenemos familia, no tenemos personas conocidas, uh, que a veces no nos dan trabajo por lo mismo, porque piensan que somos malas personas por no tener un hogar, por no tener una oportunidad en un lugar donde vivir, y no es así. Entonces, para eso estamos nosotros aquí apoyando, apoyando a nuestra causa y la causa de muchas personas que están en la calle, que no las permiten estar en algún lugar, que las fueron de las tiendas porque piensan que son malas personas, pero no es así. Hablamos personas buenas. Ay, perdón, es que siento bien sentimental. Yes. Sí. Kitsia, y que, y que, she's an honor student. Oh, uh, perfect. Pues dile lo que te pasó cuando te robaron tu mochila. Puedes decir que te has llevado experiencias buenas y malas al estar viviendo así en esta situación. ¿Te da vergüenza? Sí. ¿Tú, mi amor? What would you like people to know about this topic? And ultimately, what would you like the city of Salinas and other government officials to do about it? Um, ¿Qué piensas de, este, um, de, de, de esta agenda de la ciudad de Salinas y qué te gustaría que pasara que los policías hicieran por la comunidad? Ok, um, me gustaría que hubiera más oportunidades para las personas que están sin hogar, que hubiera lugares donde esas personas pudieran estar, que los acomodaran en algún lugar y que buscaran, eh, claro, hay personas que están mal, ayudarlas a estar mejor, darles una oportunidad que a lo mejor no la han tenido en su vida. Um, es lo que a mí me gustaría, eh, igual trabajos, oportunidades que hubiera para muchas personas, eso es lo que me gustaría que hicieran. Y me gusta que estén aquí apoyando, me gusta que estén aquí por la causa, este, para que haya un cambio. Disabilities and a lot of these programs are not, I guess, there for us in 
general. They're just they're just there for a paycheck. They don't know what we're going through. Sometimes they, you know, they just come to work just to come to work to get that paycheck. And they're not worrying about what we're going through and what the issues that we're going through. And here we are now, over there, we're about to be homeless again because um, they have us living on a hazard hazard, so they have to close it down. I've been there for four years and I've lost more there in that program than I've ever lost in general. And then when you're talking about a hassle school, you tell me what kind of hassles? We're living with rodents, we're living with cockroaches, we're living with, um, my my room fell in from the third floor to the second floor. I came home, I was, um, we've been having plumbing problems for the last three years. Not only that, but um, you know, I've been going through like a lot of mental health crisis there. And it's supposed to be a program of transition, transitional program to help us succeed and help us, you know, help us succeed in general. and. There's no, there's no, there's nothing there like that. They, I feel like I've been set. I, I feel like I've been set up there. I set back, and um, they're not working with us the way they should be working with us. And I feel like, and they're just setting us up. Like, what's the whole point of, you know, setting, bringing us from being homeless just to come back to being homeless? Um, I know about nine people that were in the program that are back out here, um, back on the streets because. The program didn't want to help them with their mental health crisis. You know, we have mental issues with coming with disabilities, coming from being homeless. There's a lot of issues that we come, you know, that come with us. And staff don't know what we're going through. You know, they say, you know, and they're just like, whatever. So, so then at the end of the day, we're still... Show me your sign. Show me, show me your sign. Oh. Right on, right on. Thank you. It's been a lot. They, they have us living on hazardous hazards. They're not caring to our needs. We've been, it's been an ongoing issue with this. You know what I mean? And, and then uh, for for how long have you been homeless? I was homeless. I've been homeless for about eight years. I haven't been out like living in a house. I've been bouncing from motel to motel to motel to motel. I've been struggling with um, reunification and like um, you know what I mean? It's like it's getting instead of getting better, it's getting worse. Things are getting harder out here, and we're not you know. When you talk about unification, unification with who? Um, with my kids. Um, with my kids, and it, these programs are making it a lot harder. Like they're not, they're not for the. I don't feel like they're for the people. They're just like I said, they're there for the, they're there for the money. Like they need, we need people to work with us that's going to be there for us and to support us all the way, not half step us half of the way and promise us all this and all this and that and and, and just leave us in the blind. You know, we need people, more people out here that are, going, you know, that can understand what we're going through a little bit, not. Technically, you know, like, because they don't, some they, they don't care. I mean, can you tell me a little bit about why, why you're going through? I'm going through, well, like, you name it, I'm going through a lot of, um, mental, like, more mental health. I'm going through, I'm going through a mental health crisis right now. I have my kid, um, which is 21 years old, but I just already came back home and stuff. And, like, there's no, like, once again, I've been in a program I, that brought me off the streets to help us um, transition into this world and, and to, you know, help us. And they're not there to help us because... I've been going through a mental health crisis and um, near, near, near fighting for my life at this program. They're paying for the security guards. They're paying for all this, you know, they're getting all these funds for what? For what? Just for, for, for a roof over our head, not for the support that we need. I've been, sex, I've been sexually assaulted um, by their security guard. I've been, I became a victim of uh, domestic violence in a program here um, in Salinas. Project Home Key, which is the bringing from the home, and we're bringing us there, and now we're all going back out to the streets again. Or, I don't know what their plan is. They're not, um, they, they give us last minute planning, so some of us are just preparing ourselves to come back out here because um, they're not giving, they're leaving us in the blind, and it's not fair. They're not being fair. Like, how are you guys going to bring us somewhere? Promise us, promise us housing in a year, and we're being set back. I lost three cars. I lost from, from the facility that they housed me in. I've lost everything there, like, and they expect us just to be out here with nothing. Like I said, um, I lost more to the city here than I've lost in my, um, all my time that I've been um, incarcerated. I've been incarcerated most of my life. And I came out here to be homeless. And um, I finally, you know what I mean? I came to, uh, to be okay. And I had my car. I had everything just to to be struggling one day at, at, a, at my home. I'm struggling not to be able to pay my, my insurance, my, you know what I mean? My registration. And I go and then in the morning I wake up and my car's not there anymore. And they're charging me five hundred dollars to get my car up. Like, what is this? You know what I mean? What is this city doing to us? Like, I feel like the city's just taking us for what we got. And I've been, yeah, like I said, I, I've been, I've been dealing with Monterey County for a long time with Salinas, and I've been shut down near um, 
everywhere I go. Are you from this area? I'm from here all my life. I'm born and raised. I've been through. Um, I've, I've been through it all. I've been. I lost my kids to the. You know, being out here on the streets to drugs and. Um, I've been to CPS system. I've been to the jail system. I've been through it all. I've been through, like I said, and I'm still here. And we need more support if, if they're shutting me. It's hard to shut me down. It's hard to shut me down. And if they're shutting me down, I know they're shutting shutting 90% of the people down. How old are you? I'm 37. 37. Freedom, homie. Freedom. <laughs> so. We do love So being out here, waiting for somewhere to be. I can't even keep up with my insulin because I don't have nowhere to put it. Started. And they do sweets and take everything. I don't know how many times I lost it over and over. Because they don't want to give me nothing. 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 Because they don't want to because I can't get my insulin. Because I have nowhere to put it. So, um, and then now I'm dealing with this. I have a lot on me. I have a dog. But I can't even tell her. Because I can't maintain her and me at the same time. I have two baby newborn kids that I've been bottle feeding and I don't want them to die out here because their mom got killed on this road. They're running around. But I've been doing this, you know what I mean, for, for a minute now. And it's like, it's time to see what you to do. I don't know how much damage she was doing because for us, we need the support, we need the shower, we need the bathroom, and we can't do that. And, uh, I mean, we can't afford hotels. All we have is what we got, and we, we really need to deal with Dorothy and Kusawa and places like that to meet us. Because if not, there will store out here. That's why I lost so much weight behind that. I used to be 260 pounds. Now I'm 150. I mean, we really need the help and the support. We need somewhere to go. We need somewhere to stay. That we don't have to worry about our stuff getting to go. Our medication, our memories, our clothing. You know, nothing's going to replace that. It happens every day. Where are you normally? On Solid Dead Street. Solid Dead Street? I'm well, anywhere in China County, because the only place for me to eat and have resources that I need. The only place I can use a restroom or a shower. You know, and get clothing. And it's the stuff that they take everything that we gain back and they just rape us up at the next day. The only time we get time is a weekend. But the weekday, every day, faithfully, I have to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and pack my stuff and get my tape down before they come, before they take it away again. I lost all my memories of my dad, my everything. The memories of my dad. Like, you know, when he died, I had pictures and all kinds of stuff that he left me. They took that from me. And I couldn't do nothing because I couldn't walk at the time. I mean, I barely started walking again, but I still can't even stand too long because my foot is. But I, I'm, I'm looking at looking at missing another toe or my whole foot right now behind not having a place to go to heal, to rest, in peace, and not have to worry about doing all this extra stuff and being outside all day in the sun. To me, that's messed up because I don't need that. I deserve better. I lost everything that I mean that meant something to me. You said you've been you've been homeless for three years. I've been doing everything, taking steps. Um, I've been going through different programs. Um, they're taking away the the the. Uh, Good night in. They're taking that away. They're trying to make house people, so that's not open no more. There was a couple of other places that I had to go to, but there's a waiting list. And it's like the first people on the list come 
course. So like, F me, even if I disable the, um, the person that I was working with, transport to somewhere else didn't tell me and was working in a bunch of houses people but did not notify me or let me know that, that they did that so I was like I feel like I'm alone out here like everyone that I can fight to and I, I, I invested in just I feel abandoned I feel like they just like said, they just thought about their sounds they ended up being in the program that was in a program working and that's not fair to me knowing my situation and for them to just disregard me and just move on that's not right you know I gave up so much I sacrificed so much every day just for this it comes down to this where the city wants to take it away and just leave us out here and then arrest us if we For the resources, and this is not fair. Has anyone been arrested? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have been arrested or being out here, but they're gonna try passing that law to arrest everybody that's homeless. That's not right. I have a lot going on, you know. I'm at the risk of losing my whole foot or my leg. I'm in that wheelchair, but I'm standing here for a purpose because I don't feel it's right for them to take everything from us when we, we have nowhere else to look up to or to, you know, to go. We don't have nothing. Like both of them, and I only got a potato on this one. But you can see the color different too. We need, we need the help, and we need the support. We, I need somewhere to heal. I need to get off the street. I don't, I don't need to be out here no more. I've been fighting and doing whatever I can to get out, but it's just like nothing's happening. You know, I, I mean, I went through every service there is. I went through the navigation center. They kicked me out for petty stuff. I mean, I was in the hospital, and they kicked me out because I was, I was in the hospital too long. And then they refused to let me go back in. Yeah, and I got amputated, okay, when they did that. So, I feel that it's right that they would do that. They do so much dirt. It's like, okay, Max, it's not fair. It's not fair for you there. The navigation center, they're running people dirty. They're, they're so, so petty for stuff that's not even, has not even on the rules or nothing. They just throw people out just when they want. It's not right. And I, I'm, willing, I'm willing to go to court for that because it's not right for them to do us like that. They just treat us like nothing and just throw us out like nothing. And then, Monique, what do you use to Well, I used to be in uh, Castorville, you know, the uh, Cecil's paid for me over there, but my dad died. I lost my storage because my GA didn't get paid. My car wasn't working. Everything just fell a domino effect. I couldn't handle it. So I left the state. I come back for this crap to happen. I've been here trying to get a place and the whole time it's like one thing after another, they're not they make an excuse after another or or like just waiting list, you gotta wait. No, that's not right. Because I mean
they said that people that have disabilities and that have children should be first. But no, now there's a lady waiting list and first people that are on there go first. And that's not fair. Because those people that are in shelters or places that do not have any disabilities or don't have nothing wrong with them. You know what I mean? And, and they put them first. You know, and it's not cool. Because I really need to heal. I need somewhere safe to be. I can't defend myself on the street. I'm too much going on and I can't protect myself. And then the cops think, you know, he's not right. The cops are being dirty, it's not even fair. I mean, I can barely walk. I can stand on my foot right now. My foot is numb. Both of them go numb because of my neuropathy from my diabetes. I take insulin. I need somewhere to go where I can keep it in the refrigerator and not worry about it getting taken from me the next day. We want to be recognized too. I want to make sure I'm using my leg. You know what I mean? I need to do whatever I can to survive. And it's not helping with everything. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Wes White, Salinas Monterey County Homeless Union Co President. Awesome. Well, Wes, can you first start off by, uh, first off, thank you for taking time to talk. Thank you for being out here. Um, could you kind of talk about what brings you out here to this protest and what this protest is all about? Um, so recently there was a, um, a Supreme Court decision called Johnson versus Grants Pass, uh, which allows jurisdictions to drive people away without um, having to offer shelter space uh, or, you know, there being available shelter beds. Uh, and so now, now it's just kind of carte blanche. You can get rid of people and take away their possessions, their survival gear. Uh, you know, which is a loss of quality of life and individual loss of life. Uh, and, and this city, in particular Salinas, has constantly been harassing and throwing away people's belongings without a posted notice before the Supreme Court decision, ever since California reopened uh, the end of 22 or the middle of 22. And uh, they just went back to business as usual, which is, you know, we don't care about you, but we ain't got no money to help you, but we got plenty of money to get rid of you. Yeah, and some people say, you know, with that Supreme Court decision that there's the potential of, you know, for the homeless population to try to find a shelter, but also potentially risk uh, jail time. I mean, a lot of people concerned that it could result in criminalization of, of you know, people that are homeless. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, absolutely. That, that's already what's been happening, you know, within our Ninth Circuit, anyway. Uh, Salinas uses roundabout ways, uh, other other means. Um, you know, they, they haven't actually, that I know of in the last few years because I started following the cases, uh, they, they haven't actually been doing tickets for camping uh, as much, you know, but we did have 7 to 7 and, and they would do tickets during that point. If you didn't have your tent down low enough, if you had too much stuff in your tent, if you were inside your tent, um, you know, it's just basic harassment. Um, you know, pe people have so little and they get paid so much. Why do they have to be so mean? And it, it's, it's policy, you know, every jurisdiction does this. Uh, city manager and city attorney of, of, of every jurisdiction, League of Cities and Association of Counties, they all have a playbook and they all play the same play, which is they're owned and operated by the unions of the Chamber of Commerce and big businesses and uh, not, for, not for the people who actually pay the taxes here. And so given, you know, everything that's happened, um, I mean, happening now, happening in the past, what would you like to see from the city of Salinas and from you know, state and federal government. So what, what I'm looking for is uh, for people to have an address. At least 400 square feet in a structure. That's a 20 foot by 20 foot personal space. And uh, you know, as long as they're maintaining it and stewarding the land and it's not like a blanket of trash, then they, they should pass them over and allow them to be somewhere, anywhere. Where they're at is fine. You know, especially on public, all right? They, people were uh, driven to the train tracks last in April of 23. And uh, there were porta potties, there were dumpsters because, like I said, during shelter in place, they were supporting everyone. There used to be hand washing stations because there was a Hep A outbreak in like 2018 or something. And uh, you know, we were serious about it at that moment. But is health and safety really a concern? Because it, it doesn't seem like it, especially when jurisdictions are allowed to do as they wish and they wish to do this. What they do is they come around with a, uh, a public works truck and a dumpster trailer usually followed by a unit of police officer and, and a, a bulldozer. And between all of that, they come and they scoop up everybody's possessions. Uh, you need food, clothing, and shelter. Now we'll give you stale food, we'll give you de dead relatives clothes, but if you can't afford the shelter, we're taking it all back. 
and it's it's a grift you know i mean people are getting non-profit uh uh you know um uh tax deductions for that and and so it's it's just a game and and it's human suffering that, that pays for all this you know you lose quality of life and you lose loss of life and for people looking at this issue you know seeing and hearing what you described and the ongoing challenges that people face what do you hope people take away when it comes to this issue and ultimately what is done to tackle it? I, I'm also a member of the Continuum of Care. I'm on, I'm on the uh, the lead committee, which is Lived Experience Advisory Directive. Uh, the Continuum of Care is what gets money for homeless services uh, from the state. And uh, uh, so what we've been trying to propose is like a receipt, a, uh, a Google survey page, you know, where, where the... Um, uh, clients of the HMIS uh, uh, database, the, the CAR system, which is Housing Management Information System, Coordinated Assessment Referral System, the coordinated entry uh, into housing. Um, you know, if, if people are signed up for services, then they should have direct access to their case manager to find out what's going on with their case, where they at in the motions, what do they need to do, what haven't they done yet, uh, you know, and uh, uh, be able to have constant contact and for doing that they can also say hey this happened to me today the police came by the parks and rec came by and they just scoop my stuff you know like 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 there's a lot of times where public works will wait they will stake out people and wait for them to walk away just to scoop up everything they have and it happens on a daily basis every weekday and the more that you talk to everybody around here they will tell you the same thing because it's happening it may not be documented and, and when, when I document, it's usually anecdotal only, you know, oh, this is a cap during the day. But can I follow them the whole day in what they're doing from, from the briefing, the morning briefing, from the policy that's already given to the actual practice out in the streets? You know, um, where's the congruence? I mean, all this money, in fact, it's a, it's a civil rights violation of the Civil Rights Act 65 for one department to work on an issue and for another department to defeat it. People are desperate, people are dying, and we need to stop the sweeps. We need to allow people an address. They need to be somewhere. So there, there's been a lot of um, undocumented sweeps um, that take place along the, the train tracks. Union Pacific is private property, so they don't need a posted notice. They really have total legal authority to clear everybody off the tracks because it's private property. Um, and then also, when people try to go, the city drove them to the tracks a year ago. And, and, um, they also took away the porta potties and the dumpsters, and there used to be hand washing stations that are no longer in service either. So health and safety doesn't seem to be their primary concern. Uh, and so when people do leave the train tracks and they go to the sidewalk or to an alleyway or to a wall, um, you know, all on public property, all on the road or something, um, the public works comes by with a bulldozer and a truck and dumpster trailer, um, typically escorted by a police officer unit which could be two officers and uh, you know they're, they're not very nice in fact they, they basically tell you you've surrendered all your property in the and, and uh, uh, to leave everyone without anything especially when Union Pacific clears them out after the city told them to go there and has been that because they've been kicked out of Chinatown for like a year and a half um, you know and so like, where can you be because that's where the services are are you looking for people to die because that's what it's that's what it seems like you know, and you got lots of quality of life, and you, and you end up with lots of life. And for that, we've seen a lot of people pass for that, you know, um, and, and it needs to stop because people are just, the trauma is in, inflicted. It's not, it's not self, it's not internal, it's external in this case. And uh, all we're asking for is an address, you know, somewhere you can be 24 hours a day, at least 400 square feet in a structure, 20 feet by 20 feet of personal space, and as long as they maintain, uh, you know, and steward the land, and it's not a, a blanket of trash, then they, the police and the city public works, they need to pass them over and just decide, well, I'm just injuring them more than helping the city, you know, and the attitude really comes from the city manager and the city attorney, because they are the two that implement the day-to-day -day policies of the city. They tell the chief of police what to do. They tell the public works director what to do. The manager thinks of the idea and the attorney makes it legal. The mayor makes it sound good enough to pass.
Okay, um, you're, you're mentioning events so like some sweeps are happening. Yeah, you know, like do you have like dates, locations? Oh, today, today they just took up a bunch of people's stuff. Now you're gonna get anecdotal information. What I'm looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm with the continuum of care, uh, you know, the, um, the uh, leadership council and the coalition of homeless service providers. I'm, I'm uh, part of the lived experience advisory directive, so we, we have a seat at the table. And uh, uh, what we need is some way for uh, people who are case managed within the HMIS cars to, um, to be able to have constant contact with their case managers, figure out what's happening in their case, and um, you know, tell them of any issues that arise, which may include, uh, you know, the city came and took all my stuff. Um, I mean, you know, otherwise you just got anecdotes, and that that's that's easy to, to dismiss. And then just going back to this sweep that happened today, where was that sweep at? And around on, what time? On on um, uh, Solidarity Street. On Solidarity Street. Yes, and and I have I have video of uh, of the city taking away like five people's homes along the wall on the back half of. Um, uh, Daiichi, which is a senior uh, living complex uh, on Lake Street on, on the Chinatown side. And, and it's completely like a, like a, a backwater eddy. I mean, there, there's no traffic that goes through there. So it's, it's, they're, they're being safe out of the way. The train tracks are much more dangerous, which the city put them to. So that's a, that's a state created danger. And, uh, you know, they're not allowed. To, so, so you're going to just steal all their things, all their possessions, all their survival gear, because we still need food, clothing, and shelter. And the food that we'll give you is stale. The clothes that we give you are dead relatives, and if you ain't got a place to put it, we're taking it all back. So that whole attitude is what is the outcome of the Grants, uh, Johnson versus Grants Pass case. Uh, you know, well, in, in Grants Pass, uh, people are typically uh, rotated between parks within a week. Uh, so they're constantly moving, and uh, they have to, you know, hardly have anything, and uh, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's very difficult to function and to get any, any sense of progress out of it because you're too busy to survive each of the day for the moment, realizing you got to pick up a move, you have no, no door that locks, you know, um, so, so it's, um, it's, it's very, like, there's a few people who would have showed up right now if they could have felt comfortable leaving their things where they were. And then, going back to this, you know, because, you know, now, like, the Supreme Court, like, to the cities to decide how they want to address when house people or if they want to enforce any you know, right. in, in rules writing. regulations that they have. Has things changed at all in Salinas after that decision? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you, ever since they drove people, ever since California reopened, uh, they went back to old business. And, and that, that's just, we don't care. We ain't spending any money on you to help you, but we'll certainly spend a lot of money getting rid of you. And, and so, to me, it's over discrimination. It's it's racist to the core, uh, and, uh, and there, there's really no way around that. Because look, look at it, most everyone, people call you. Give me any demographic, I'll find you one living outside right here in the cities. And then I'm just gonna go back to some things because you were saying that before there was like they have like dumpsters, I think. And uh, then, uh, yeah, dumpster trailers in yes. a truck. Yeah, and then uh, bathrooms and running water or like something. Yes, okay. yes. So when was that and when when they removed it? And that was what? April 23. 20, okay. Um, April, April 11. And there was actually a leadership council meeting the day before where five or six people spoke about their impending danger. And uh, uh, that video is recorded by the coalition for the leadership council, which is through the continuing care, which gets state funding, which makes them a public entity, and they will not release the video of, of those couple of public comments or that, that entire meeting. Uh, and then um, going, uh, what did they tell you when they removed those services? Uh, they didn't say anything. What do you mean? I mean, they, they just rolled up and took it away. I mean, you know, and what do you do? You're, you're, you're at the mercy of our city parents. And our city parents are being abusive. They're being authoritarian rather than authoritative. And what do you think needs to change? Or where are some of the studies that you guys have done? Well, like, like I said, people need an address. Somewhere they can be 24-7, 365, you know, somewhere, anywhere. Um, where they're at right now is fine. You know, um, I think if, if the blight was mitigated, the trash, uh, you know, then, then uh, presentation shouldn't be a problem. The curb appeal should be fine, you know, but instead of just attacking poor people. Uh, running water and electricity are two things that, that people need, you know, it's, it's something that any civilized 
country. I mean, just think of anything that you have in your house, people are going to need a laundry and a shower, a kitchen, all the utensils to go with that, pots and pans. So we need stuff, and you can't stuff all that inside a backpack. So it, it, it accumulates, yes. And maybe there's an easy way, if people did have constant contact with their case managers, that the police could go, hey, you know what, your place is messy, I'm going to go tell on you to the case manager. And the case manager is going to redirect you, and if you're not redirected after so many chances, then we're going to sweep you. You know, but, but it shouldn't just be so automatic, open discrimination. Well, somebody messed it up for everybody. You know, because that, that's a constant. Um, and and it's, it's just an excuse. What, what they say is like, um, you can't be here. And, and, you know, well, where can I be? That's not my problem. Well, whose problem is it if it's not the city parents? So you feel that they're not really, like, do you think they're doing a good job or not? Like, you know, connecting people to services? Or um, what do you think about that? No. No, obviously, they, they just close down CSU and BCHA. Um, they don't have any funding. And who's picking up a snack? I mean, really, they're, they're, everybody's already at capacity, over capacity, as far as, you know, case manager to, to client ratio. Okay, and then just going back to the showers, the bathrooms, um, you know, forgot the name of the other part, but, you know, they, they dump their trash, like, have those services always been available? I'm just curious about that. Um, so a lot of that happened because we, we made a position paper on sweeps like in the, the end of uh, 2019, start of 2020, uh, which the coalition adopted, which said you can have people with services and, and you know you had seven administrative steps before you got to a sweep. And uh, uh, mitigating the circumstances was one of those options. But of course it was never adhered to. Uh, and then, then the pandemic happened. We were able to secure like shelter in place for people, one of the only cities in the state to actually calm down uh, driving people out. And, and those services did come. CSU and BCHA was a big one. Uh, uh, Interim and, and Community Homeless Solutions, or maybe it's the other one. <laughs> There's too many, too many names. Uh, and um, uh, Dorothy's, what, what, you know, I mean, people were uh, supporting the Supplies were provided, bottles of water were provided on a regular constant basis. Plus meals, Salvation Army was giving meals. And then once they got the money, they gave us jail food, bologna sandwiches. So, um, you know, the budget, I mean, it seems like it's a lot of sales pitch. It's not really meant to support people, it's just meant to support themselves through contracts or grants. But uh, it needs to be toward better and best practices. And one of the first things is stop the hurt to help the heal. Give people decency, dignity, and uh, dominion over their own life. And then, like going back to the sweeps, how, how often are they happening? Daily, daily, every day. About 30% of every police officer, public works uh, job duty is finding people's property while they're not there. In fact, they'll stake them out and wait until people walk away, just so they can steal their tent. It's not right. There's no legality in that. They should have a posted notice. Supreme Court case or not, you know, they, people, people, and not just three uh, calendar days, but three basis days. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of improvement that could happen if we cared, and this kind of goes in connection with, like, the re-stabilization ordinance, too, because there's a lot of people who are getting evicted, uh, impacted housing, having to move in with other other friends and family, and, you know, on the floor, on the couch, maybe, maybe behind a closet or something, um, you know, with, with a sheet dividing everything. So it's 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 a free for all no matter where you go and that's the only solution they got is like the share center or the navigation center, which are both congregate shelters where anybody can walk up to your, your property and take it if you're not there. You know, um, so it's really hard to feel extremely safe if you're not like in a senior room And then one of the things that you mentioned is like having an address, how you have like proposed any places that uh, well, how about that century park right there where the carnival's happened? Um, a couple years ago, Tony Barrera said that he was in talks with the owner and that they were interested in allowing us into the cabinet. And then, of course, nothing was ever heard from again. And, uh, you know, I mean, because we never really meant it to begin with. But yes, locations have been said. Uh, you know, at that park, there are bathrooms there. There's electricity, so running water electricity. Especially for women. Come on, man. Where's the heart? Where's the... We, we say we're a god for the Christian nation. Where is it? Show it. Don't just say it. And then just going back, what park? In what area? I'm sorry. Uh, Sun Street Park, where the carnival is right now. 
um, right on the other side street there, next to the highway. It's like seven acres. And, and you know, you can line up, you can line up Rosa Tan. If you look at Rita Acosta's book, uh, Make a Difference, um, she shows and illustrates how the community came together and put, uh, you know, took over a, a little lot and said, you know what, we'll have some rules. social order, you know, um, nothing real dramatic, and they also, uh, they also brought the first, uh, they also brought the first porta potty to Salinas, Chinatown, um, you know, they, they collaborated with CSUB before it was Che, uh, and created the C4 thing, which, you know, was basically just picking up trash and litter up and down the street. This was at the point where nobody could be on the sidewalk, you couldn't lay down, you couldn't have a blanket, you couldn't, you know, so, um, so going to that private property and making it manicured and nice and crisp, there, you know, there were two rows of tents with trash cans in between every other. Um, somebody had a key and it was passed around for the porta potty lot so that people weren't, you know, misusing and abusing the porta potty because, you know, that's being responsible. And that's, people are capable of that. It's just a matter of being allowed permission. You know, I mean, people are living in their cars and they're totally legally parked. They can be there for three days. Yet the police will roll right up on them and say, you can't be here and, and try to tell their people. So is it, is it supportive or is it, uh, you know, antagonistic?
It's now. Don't shut your responsibilities.
could happen to you.
Here we go, the right people are horny. Make some 
Liberty divided.